Hello everyone and welcome. Today I want to make a fun little geometry node game. A easy one, but a fun one nonetheless. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to set up a game that looks like this. We've got a wall, we've got a ball, and we've got a little bracket thingy, rackets, whatever. And this is going to move towards the wall and back. And we want to reflect it with this um this wreck thingy right just so there, there's a game that does that but you need two players i suppose but now we're gonna use a wall because let's face it um we're all blendering alone <laughs> so let's just try something like that okay so this is gonna be like a 2d kind of game i suppose so let's open up a geometry node window and find new and let's subdivide um or actually let's transform this geometry and scale this down in the x-axis to be more of like a plank. There we go. Now, in this geometry, I want a wall as well. So, shift A, mesh, plane, R, Y, 90. And in edit mode, scale it up and extrude it. Just like that. And this is going to be our wall. So, let's name this wall. There we go. And let's name this racket. Beautiful. Save it. Game. <laughs> there we go. So now we need a ball in the game. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, we are going to do some beautiful magic. Um, so should we add this all in the same geometry? Probably not. We don't even want a geometry node in here. This should just be our moving object, our rackets. There we go. A bit bigger. There we go. And now we're going to add a geonode system for the ball. There we go. A sphere. New. And... Let's just scale this down in edit mode to be a ball shaped like that. Um, actually, I'm not going to use this um, this ball because it's too much geometry. I want this to be quick. So let's find a cube instead. Connect that. And let's find a subdivide surface there. And set this to like 2 or 1 even maybe. No, 2. Do 2 and set the size to be a bit lower like that. There we go. Now we are talking. So by default, I want this ball to spawn, for example, here and move into the direction of um, the wall with a random velocity, I suppose. So let's find a simulation zone. Simulation zone. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. And let's find a set position node right there. And I want the offset to be a named attribute called V for velocity. Now, I'm going to define a starting velocity, store named attribute. So, this is going to be before the simulation zone. So, a store named attribute for the velocity vector v. And the value is going to be an x vector, vector in the x direction of like 0.01. And we want this velocity to be the offset. And now, if I play this, you can already see it's going to move into a direction of 0.1 in the y direction. Let's do x exactly. Um, x direction let's reset I did z we need x y am I like this there we go point now I want to add a little bit of a random sideways velocity too so shift a vector math and add um, a random value random value and I want to add a random value and I don't want this to affect the points of a mesh but the entire mesh so let's store this as an instance, right? Should be doable. Shift A, instance. No. Um, uh, geometry to instance. There we go. Let's store this as an instance as well. And that should already do the trick, I suppose. Yeah, there we go. Um, so this is too much, obviously. Um, we just want to give it a little bit of a random speed or, or direction in the y direction. So minus y, for example, is going to be minus 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. So then it's just going to move into a side direction. That's too much, as you can see, 0 0.15 and 1.15. There we go. Looking a bit better, but perhaps we need to add some walls as well. That should be cool, right? Let's add some walls. So control R. Left click and scale this so it's nearly at the end points there. And let's just extrude these side walls a bit as well like that. Beautiful. 
and we can just if we want connect it up here once again by adding ctrl r and there ctrl r alt z selecting these edges and moving them a bit closer like that and then we can just select the interface there and there right mouse and bridge faces beautiful we got a little box to play in so now it can actually bounce there 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 so there we go we play this you can see it's already working so now we can actually set our velocity to change when it's approaching a wall right and that is easily done by shift a hitting vector or no sorry uh, a switch set to vector and what, what do we want to do let's think about this real quick when our ball approximately approaches the wall we want our vector to reflect with the normal direction of that wall if that makes sense so let's do that okay so let's have a vector v reflect that and we want to reflect reflect this in a normal direction of a surface and the surface is going to be wall so drag that in there relative geometry um sample surface sample near surface should work i suppose vector and let's just call this normal there we go and then we can actually reflect this in the normal direction there when that's true and it's going to be just a regular velocity when it's false and the switch is going to be a distance right from the ball to the wall and this is going to reflect if the distance for example of the wall so a geometry proximity could be or we could use um or we could use a ray cast node let's go with proximity first if the distance compare is less than for example 0.1 crank that in there and it's going to switch when that is the case so if we just play this it should be normal and now it's approaching you can see it is actually bouncing but it's also bouncing back okay because if it's no longer the case it is actually so you can see now that it is working because we're getting a bounce effect but it's gonna keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and that's because it's not updating the actual speed v and the reason is because of the only place we're storing v is outside of the simulation which means that this is simply going to be our velocity and we just have to store that so find another store in attribute that's going to be v of course as the vector v this is going to be the vector and then we just want the v to drive that set position and that way we looped it around so offset there so now go back at the start v is just our starting velocity and then it's being updated by either it's going to be v in the direction that it is right now or it's going to reflect the direction and then it's going to carry on now we need to set this on an instance though because we're using an actual instance so make sure to use that right play it you can see it's now bouncing around let's up the frames a little bit and see bounce bounce it's gonna back ah, okay next step so we can set the distance at which it's gonna be bouncing for example if we want this to be a bit closer we can set this to be 0.2 for example 0 0.2 0 0.2 there we go and it's going to be bouncing just a bit closer to the wall looks a bit more real and um, so then i also want to include our racket object relative all right and we can just use this as the same input as our object here right so let's drag a line hold shift and right mouse to connect two lines like i just did and shift a join geometry and find this here so now we can just play it and see how it goes. I'm actually going to the GeoNode setup and perhaps crank down the distance just a tiny bit, like 0.1. And this one, crank it up just a tiny bit as well. So this has a bit more time to actually calculate the distance between objects. Um, I feel like it's going to be a bit smoother. And this one, 0.4 is fine too. Let's see. It looks a bit smoother already. Right there, you fail. And what I want to do as well is let's just add a bit of text um, called um, your um, <laughs> your bad. Yeah, I wanted to type something else, but I should do that on YouTube. Um, your bad, right? Something like that. 
Um, let's hide that here. And whenever this switch is toggled, this switch, so we can just add another output, hold shift, right mouse, drag that here. And we want this to control, for example, the scaling of an object. Um, so we can do, let's just drag the text in there first and join this up, join the geometry. There we go. You're bad. No, relative. To switch this from not showing to showing, because I don't want to see your bed all the time. And um, there's a few things we can just do quite easily. So what I want to do is I want to store the distance um, between the ball and the wall. So I'm going to choose this to a geometry proximity. Right, This is the wall, the, the fail wall. And this distance I want to tweak into a store named attribute set to float and to an instance and drag that in there and I'm going to call this D and I want to call that a variable there and then I want to just sample it right I want to sample this because we're working with two meshes right and get it into your head is that if we have a mesh that is unrelated to that variable right so this text has not got that variable D at anywhere um, we can just use a sample index node and the sample index we can sample a value of a mesh at a specific index and in this case we have one index because it's an instance and we can just store the index at in uh, sorry the value d at index one for example right so that is just the index of that instance and we can connect that into the value we connect the mesh of that ball into the sample index and this is going to be compare right because if the distance is less than 0.4 i want to switch between this geometry true and this zero geometry false which means that it's just gonna not be showing all right and it's not showing properly because it is in fact instance zero okay fine right there we go if you fail you're bad that's just how it goes and now you can just play your game and if you miss you're done beautiful so this is the very very basic setup um so i think that's it for this one we can make something more advanced and um, because now um for example the ball is not controlled by the speed of your object we can't really get it into the other direction for example we can't really control where the ball is going depending on what point on our object it is bouncing away from and um, but that could be something for the next tutorial right so meaning that if it bounces here um it goes a bit back here and if it bounces more here it goes a bit more that way you know that's all stuff we can control in the geonode setup but i hope <laughs> you learned something it is quite fun to to just you know play some random small games and we can now also control this into the x direction we could lock that in y as well but you know just play this game and have fun with it it's quite uh quite nice i'd say and we fail there we go you're bad all right thank you so much for watching if you like this please leave a like a comment subscribe we will enjoy any one of those and then we'll see you in the next one cheers